Hey everyone, welcome to Wit Code. Where in this video, we're going to learn how to protect a web application that uses JWT cookies from cross site request forgery or CSRF attacks. So, before we begin, let's go over what a cross site request forgery attack is. So, a cross site request forgery or CSRF attack is where an attacker tricks a user into making an unwanted request. For example, say the user gets an email from an attacker containing a link, such as this here. We have a email, this is definitely not CSRF, with a link like this. If the user clicks on this link, so say we click on this link, it could perform an unwanted action on the user's behalf. So we click on this. Currently we're unauthorized, we'll learn about this throughout this video, but potentially clicking on a link like this could be dangerous. And now when it comes to cookies, so cookies are often leveraged in successful CSRF attacks because browsers automatically include cookies in requests. So when we click this link, cookies associated with that domain or that origin will be sent to. So therefore, if we click a malicious link that, the, that an attacker sent us, like this one here, the request will contain all our users, all of our cookies for this link. And when it comes to JWTs, JWTs, which are commonly used for authorization, are often stored inside HTTP cookies. Therefore, CSRF attacks can use these cookies to perform unwanted actions on sites that require authorization. In other words, if the link the attacker provides is to a website that requires authentication, then the attacker could use the JWT cookie to bypass this. Now let's demonstrate an application that is vulnerable to CSRF that uses JSON web tokens and cookies. So specifically, what we're gonna be using is a node application with the libraries Express, so Express here, Cookie Parser, and also JSON Web Token. So if you're not familiar, Express is just a minimalist web framework for working with Node. JSON Web Token here is a library that implements JWTs in a Node app, and Cookie Parser is a middleware, which basically means it handles requests, and it parses cookies received in the request and places them on this request object. And it has a few other things as well. But now let's go over this code. So our code will consist of a login page, which is at this route here, a global JWT authentication middleware, which is this right here, and a protected route, which is this here. So specifically, this page right here will return an HTML login form. This global middleware right here will check the validity of a JWT token, and this is a protected route that requires a JWT or a valid JWT to access it. And we also have this here, which handles a post request and creates a JWT token and places it inside a cookie. And let's see this in action. So the way this works is let's bring this over here, split this to the side, and we have a server listening on port 4001. If we go to this site, 4001, we have our login form. And now if we fill in this info, so let's just fill in a username and password, we get a message back saying the cookie, a cookie has been set. And we can check this by checking inside our application tab. We now have a cookie called myjwt, my JWT which contains a JWT token here which is set with this line of code right there. And now that we have this JWT placed on the client, we can access this protected route. So all we have to do is go to dash profile and we can see we have access. Let me also attach this. Let me dock this to the window. But so now we have access. So because we have a, this cookie set, so once again, we have this cookie right here set for local host. Let's see what happens if in our email, we click on this link. So say we're looking through our email, we have a definitely not CSRF. Let's click on this and it takes us right in and we're authenticated. So when we click this link here, it sends this request, but also with our cookies. So if we look at the request, so let's refresh this, bring this up. Inside the request, in the request headers, we have a cookie. These are some Google ads ones here, but we have our myjwt containing our JWT token. So when we click this link in the email, the cookies were automatically sent and you can see the potential risks or security risks with having this implementation. And of course, this doesn't do anything. This just log accesses a protected route. But imagine if the link here was malicious. So if the URL contained query parameters to set user information or even submit some form of post request containing a malicious payload or even hiding something in an image, so a bad link inside an image, the possibilities are basically endless. But the great thing about storing a JWT inside a cookie is that cookies provide many flags that can restrict what the cookie, and hence JWT, is capable of doing. So for example, if we look in here, our cookies have many flags, 
along here used to protect the cookie. So we have this one here is, let me minimize these. So we have some flags such as HTTP only, secure, same site, all used to protect our cookie or restrict what it can and can't do. And to prevent cross-site request forgery, we can set this same site attribute. So where our cookie is set in here, what we can do is specify same site and the values are either lax, none, or strict. And what the same site attribute does is it prevents browsers from sending a cookie in cross-site requests, hence providing protection against CSRF attacks. And these values here, what they mean is none means no protection. Cookies are attached in all cross-site requests. Next, we have lax, which a cookie is sent in cross-site requests if it's a get request and the request came from a top-level navigation, such as a user clicking on a link. And then we have strict, which will not send the cookie in any cross-site request. So now if we set this to strict, and let's also remove our cookie here, but we can do right-click delete. Now if we access profile, we get unauthorized, but let's set a new cookie. And the way we can do this is just enter something into our form again. So let's do cheese, let's put in some password, let's log in. We have another cookie that's been set, and here we can see it right here. And now of course we can access profile if we directly type it in like this, and we get hello cheese. However, if we go back to our email with this link here and we click on it, we will have unauthorized. So even though the cookie is sent, it's not being sent along with this request because we have the same site value set to strict and accessing this URL from this tab with this different origin is a cross-site request. But this is just a quick demonstration on how you can protect cookies and JWTs from cross-site request forgery. Note that not all browsers support this same site feature. So this one, not all browsers actually support this. So as a result, further protection of an application with say a CSRF token would add even more security, but that's unrelated to the cookie itself and will be for another time. But this was my video on JWT cookies and CSRF. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll try and get back to you. Um, if you want to support me, please consider downloading my Chrome extension called Witceptor. And besides that, uh, thank you and have a good one.